Hello people of the verse and welcome to the channel, it's The Eradicator and in today's video, well, 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 we are going to talk about the latest episode of Inside Star Citizen and it's also giveaway time guys, so we're gonna have an amazing giveaway today and uh, well, let's get started, let's see, uh, so in November we had a prospector thanks to Anadun, this was for all of you guys who uh, answered the question that I was asking at the end of each video or during each video here and in this video this was the uh, star citizen of a 3.15 solo 8th integer mission this is the one that was selected and so the question was uh, which was the craziest place you've seen NPCs popping we are going to check out right now the winner of this video I've also already put the link here let's get the oh I forgot the duplicate users no oh, oh, oh. Let, let's let's do it again one more time uh, we are going to filter duplicate users here and we have 121 comments here we go let's pick a winner you need to be subscribed in public settings otherwise i can't know if you are a subscriber and it is spirit tax who is here i saw one floating outside port Orisar one time well let's have a look if spirit tax is a subscriber i'm pretty sure he is and spirit tax is indeed a subscriber he has been subscribed for one year we're going to tell him congratulations congratulations spirit tax you are now the proud owner of a prospector coming up next is of course the giveaway that is happening on discord thanks to dr forbin we are giving away a retaliator we got 81 entries a pretty big giveaway indeed so let's spin the wheel and let's see who is going to be the winner of this amazing ship a best in show edition oh it is slowing down here and it looks like our winner is naughty taco naughty taco a member of the Iraqer for a long time. So glad that you're winning this ship. Notice that I'll be contacting you very soon. But what is the giveaway for December? Well, December is also the month when Christmas is happening on this channel. We've always had crazy giveaways for Christmas and it's happening again for you guys, the subscriber of this channel on YouTube. We have three prices. The $84 Intergalactic Aerospace 2951 Armor Pack, as well as two Anvil Spartans with LTI. All you have to do is to subscribe to the channel, make sure you're in public settings, as you can see. Otherwise, I can't see if you're subscribed or not, and answer the giveaway question I'm asking in uh, the videos. The winners will have 10 days to claim the prize. Also, if you want to go the extra mile and support me on Patreon or via the YouTube joint membership, you should have access to my Discord channel, where we have given away, thanks to Dr. Robin, an Anvil Liberator. Raider. That is absolutely mind blowing. We're gonna have a Merry Christmas this year. Ho ho ho! And Santa Claus is Erad in Dr. Forbin. Thank you so much, Dr. Forbin, for helping this channel. And thank you to everyone out there who helped me out and uh, go the extra mile or just subscribe to the channel and help me grow the channel as well. You guys are awesome. All right, guys, time to say hello to Jared. We've seen uh, the Odyssey, so we're not going to talk about the Odyssey in this video because uh, we talked about it before and it's probably going to have its own separate video in the future. It was a very interesting video that Jared uh, brought, us, brought us, but I want to talk about some of the ships that are coming up in the future, some of the ships that Star Citizen developers are working on right now. So here we go. Let's have a look at this print report, which is going to be a very exciting Bursting one. Bursting back into the scene with a massive impact that is sure to make Carrick owners look twice. And while that wraps up our multi-week coverage of the new ships and vehicles of this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, let's now, I don't ahead. really believe that the uh, the Odyssey is a character. I think it's an interesting compliment, though. Why not having both? Anyway, let's have a look at the whole A. vehicle content team have returned their attentions to the whole A and whole C as they continue refining the work previously done in order to bring it up to current standards and Perhaps most now, that's importantly, where the cargo uh, the cargo boxes are gonna be. I love the way it reacts. It retracts like that. And look at that. That's the interior. It looks so much like a prospector. I also like the fact that they're using some of the existing assets in the game to work on ships faster than before. You can see that progression. You're really getting cranked up and getting faster and faster. Good on you, CIG. For some time, you'll know we learn with each and every ship That's we That's exactly what and I it's say. it's essential to take those lessons forward so they can inform each and every ship yet to come. Now, while the whole A continues its journey through final art exterior and gray box interior, 
What you can see here with oh, the whole C, C are the results of not just I can't some wait for this one. passes, it's but an going to completely to break trade. Then that's we, that's why we need a cargo refactor. Player and that ship is massive. Look at that corridor. Addressing those metric issues and experimenting with some early attempts at new Oh, that's so cool. I hope that those beams tractor beams here. Look at that tractor beams here. These are the new UI that's going to happen in there. That's going to be that are going to be there in the future. I hope that we'll be able to use those tractor beams to actually pull in those boxes and attach them to the cargo arms of the whole sea. I, I would assume that this is how it works, but I suppose that when the whole sea will get there, we'll have more details, right? And speaking of tractor beams, the vehicle content team has begun building the size one, two, and three tractor beams oh, that, that can be awesome. equipped to a variety of vehicles. Of course, from with it some in this long awaited functionality to ships like the 300 seen here. 300 C, <laughs> Jared, it's a new variant, right? Where, Where's my, by the way, where's my Cutlass Purple, right? Now, something that I've been really wondering, and that's actually going to be the QA question, guys. What are going to be the purpose of having a tractor beam on one of the small ships like the 315, 315C? I forgot the little letter after 315, but uh, what, what's going to be the, the point? Let me know in the comment section down below. As far as I'm concerned, I think that it would be nice to carry some larger boxes of cargo, but why not? Like in, for example, in the Star Wars X-Wing games, right? You have tractor beams too, and those tractor beams are very useful to slow down other ships in combat. I was really wondering if that's going to be one of the tricks that this particular variant of the 300 series is going to be able to do. I think it will be a nice, interesting advantage here. The Caterpillar and more. Minor updates are also underway to the Starfarer as it gets ready to make its debut, not just as the first refueling ship in Star Citizen, but the first refining vehicle as well. As new additions to the exterior Now, of course, we have a very interesting what Jara says. We do have those refineries at stations, but eventually there will be as well in the uh, in, in ships too, right? And so, how is this going to work? Are we going to just put our, our, our fuel boxes from the prospector? Are we going to be able to detach them with maybe a tractor beam and put them on the uh, on those uh, pods here on those uh, slots and then it's going to be refining and will bring back the slot or it will bring back the fuel into the slot as refined and we'll be able to transfer them in the cargo hole or are we going to have to change the boxes and is everything going to be automatic or manual something that also would be very interesting in seeing here so one of the reasons why i think that ship to ship Fuel transfer is delayed to 3.17 because they want to be bringing those extra gameplay elements into the game. It's obviously not ready yet, right? Will allow it to take canisters of newly mined fuel from other spaceships for processing. And yes, we want to update the interior just as much as you do. We're looking at where we can slip that into the schedule now, so uh, hang tight. Oh, thank you, Jared. That's fantastic news because obviously we all know that the uh, staff error is an FPS maze, right? Very cramped inside. It's so easy to get lost even years after the release. Uh, there are still people, including myself, who get lost inside that ship. So if we can make it a little bit easier. The top deck, the deck 4 above the habitation deck should be removed, in my opinion. That would also be nice, but I guess uh, we'll see uh, uh, how it goes. Up right? next, let's move along to the Vulture, the entry-level salvage ship from Drake, which has moved into final art phase with a look at the habitation area. I like the trash well on the floor. The <laughs> Very uh, industrial and, and just Oh yes. Their journey, we can announce that the Scorpius fighter from RSI has begun its journey through white box phase, where the team works to ensure all current metrics are met and that all the component spaces work as we'd like them to. It's so far so good. It looks so no much. It looks really big. Let's have a look again. I mean, yeah, surely we don't have, but this could be about the size. Uh, of a human, right? This ship is actually much bigger than I originally thought. It looks more like a... Is it considered as a heavy fighter? Because it looks like a... In terms of size, it's definitely twice the... It looks like it's twice the size of an Journey arrow. Through white box face. It is going the to be works to a big hit... Uh, a a big hit box like for smaller to. fighters, for sure. It's so far, so good. With no surprises. Which itself is kind of always a surprise i hope it's going to be uh and finally before we let you go to be quite we showcase the updated concepts for the banu merchantman at this year's citizen con and now i'm pleased to report that in our final iae 2951 vehicle episode 
that the merch chunk man itself yes, has the begun its journey man. and moved from concept phase into white box with this highly anticipated first image. Ooh, worthy hey, of the very first edit somewhere. games. <laughs> she may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. And you're going to get stuff. Follow along with it from the very beginning of its journey from this point forward. I could have done better so what myself. We this week? <laughs> well, we learned that Misk wasn't content to just let Anvil sit alone at the top of the exploration pyramid with the recently revealed Odyssey. That there are a variety of new ships and ship updates that will make their way to the persistent universe between this year's IAE and the next. Oh, are we getting here some spoiler, Jared, telling us that some of the ships are being worked and that we've seen here are going to be seen between this Ga uh, Galactic Expo and the next one. Is this a sign to come for maybe the Merchantman being the big surprise, the big reveal, and the big sale of the next Expo? Which would make sense because they do need some flagship, so to speak, for those Expo. Those Expos are always the big money makers for Star Citizen. And if they could somehow cram in the Merchantman, I think a lot of people will be picking it up, even with the price increase. And that sometimes... I'm just going to hide stuff in the outro to reward folks who watch until the very end. Something like a, a bunch more Banu Merchantman updates, maybe. Ah, that definitely <laughs> yeah, that definitely looks much better than the pictures that we saw before. Look at that. We're going to see uh, some work on the interior. We can definitely see, again, some of the cues from the Defender making their way into the Banu Merchantman, those seats. Look at all those space here. It looks so roomy inside. Looking good. Nice. Look at that. Is that the cockpit or the bridge? Again, looking very, very sleek, very alienish for sure. Wow, that is really awesome. That's a turret, not an ED-209. That gun is massive as well. It already feels, Ooh, you can already feel the opulence of the Banu all over there inside those concept, not concept, white box, man. We're in white box, it's not concept anymore. They're working on the ship. They're really trying to bring in for next year for the expo. That is fantastic news. It's going to be a huge amount of work. I can't even, I would like to know how many people are working on the Banu Merchantman right now to do that. One year, uh, still early progress, right? One year is it's going to be tight, I think. But if they work as hard as they did for the Karak, and we're going to see regular updates on the Badu Merchantman, I think that they'll be able to make it. Video. Yes, cool animation here. Yes, sometimes I'm a jerk. But I'm your jerk. Now, don't forget that our big IAE all That's ships awesome, Q&A airs tomorrow on Star Citizen. Well, as I said, this is the end of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. And, uh, well, I suppose that the next episode of Inside Star Citizen will be more about uh, what's coming up to come up in 3.16, the developments of 3.16 as well. Because it's another topic for another day, obviously. But uh, 3.16 seems very empty so far. And I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the progress that they are doing with this patch, right? Anyway, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much to Eric Ohl and Dr. Fobin. This is The Eradicator. I'll see you guys later. A huge shout out to everyone who's been helping me out on Patreon and via the YouTube Joint Membership Program. Creating content on YouTube involves continuous circles of ups and downs, and it is when we are the lower parts of the curve that your help really motivates me to keep on going. Your contribution really does make a difference, which is why in return I try to give back by offering backers access to my private Discord channel, automatic access to exclusive giveaways, or answering your questions during the show. You can help me out with as little as a dollar a month, and any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching again. This is The Eradicator. I'll see you guys later.